And then how to discover our spiritual gifts. You know, each person has some strength. Each person has some natural tendency that he wants to do certain things. Some people have the, you know, they, they, even as a little child, they have a tendency to want to help people. Some people have a tendency to want to sing. Some people have a tendency to, to build. Even a little child want to build something. Uh, some people, little children even wants to, uh, want to uh, do evangelism. So they have this spiritual gift. And I've seen some children, uh, the, the, ch the child gathers some other children and then teach them like a teacher. Now that the person might have the gift of teaching. So each person has a tendency to do certain things, have a motivation to do certain things. This is how God makes us, made us. God made us all very different. We all have different spiritual gifts, different tendencies. That's why People, some people want to be a carpenter, some people want to be a farmer, some people want to be a merchant, some people want to be a pastor. We all have different tendencies and those came from God who put those tendencies inside us. So we want to discover our spiritual gifts. Okay, we can start with things we naturally want to do. Now, Some people have musical sense. Some people want to care for people. They, even little child, the little child wants to care for someone. Uh, when the little, chi little child sees someone suffering, he will come to help. And then some people want to share what God has done in their lives. And some people want to do evangelism. Some people want to share God's messages. So we all have different natural tendencies. And we discover our own tendency and then ask God, how can I use this for your kingdom? And then also our children. We pay attention to the children. We notice that some, a child might have interest in one thing and another child has interest in another thing. Now sometimes some parents just want their children to make money. And then it happens in, uh, you know, I've heard about a lot of stories of people, they're interested in music, but the, the parents say, you know, you cannot make money with music. Or some people like to draw, and the parents say, you cannot make money with drawing. But actually, you know, um, we, when we seek our spiritual gifts, we don't necessarily think of earning money. Although the person who naturally can, you know, like music, maybe in his future, in his work, there is something that can be related to music. And some people have a natural tendency to draw. Maybe that one day he can you know, do, do something related to drawing. So each person has certain natural talents. And those can become uh, spiritual gifts when, they are, when a person is trained. Like even as a child myself, I saw my father play I played the harmonica. Actually, I noticed that my father and my brothers uh, all like music. So that is a natural gift uh, that is, uh, we got from our, uh, uh, my father and then from the grandfather on that we have received this, that my father could play music and he also could play the harmonica. When I saw him play, I asked him to teach me and then I played the harmonica. And then later, in, uh, when I was in uh, secondary school, I joined the harmonica band. And then uh, later, I played uh, guitar. I learned to play the guitar, learned to play the piano, learned to sing. All this, it's uh, something given to me from God. Uh, as a little child, I can remember songs. And also, when I hear music, I, I always... Um, uh, you know, I like the music. That I notice that when I go into a restaurant, some other people may not notice the music being played. I already heard the music. So it's a natural gift. And also, I have gifts in other areas too that I build up. And all this we can build up so that we can be used by God greatly. And each one of us 
has the spiritual gift, has one or more. So steps to discover our spiritual gifts. First, we love God and have a close relationship with God because God is the one who gives spiritual gifts and God can help us to build up the spiritual gifts. So first, we build up a strong relationship with God and then God will give us the necessary spiritual gifts. I've known people who always uh, seek different spiritual gifts, but they have no interest in God. I said, spiritual gifts come from God. And if you don't have a close relationship with God, then God doesn't bless you with building up, uh, building up your spiritual gift. It's best to have a close relationship with God and then spiritual gifts will come. It will come. So when we want to serve God, that uh, when we have a close relationship with God, that spiritual gifts will come. And then be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit is a very intimate relationship with God. That any time we pray, we can experience His strength and His joy and His motivation. And then when we experience God like that, then when we lay hand on people, most likely they will experience the work of the Holy Spirit. So uh, it's very important to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to have an intimate relationship with God. Now, I have met many people and they said, um, and some people said, well, I, um, I, want, I want the spiritual gifts you have. Um, I don't have it. And they just seek spiritual gifts. They just look at the spiritual gifts and say, I want this, I want that. Actually, we'll say, God, you can give those to me when I have a close relationship with you. Then you will give the spiritual gifts to me naturally. So I hope that we all hunger for a close relationship with God and then we'll have the spiritual gifts from God. And then obey God's word. If we don't obey God, then God will not bless our life. And blessing our life includes giving us spiritual gifts. And then have compassion on people. That is very important that spiritual gifts are for building up the church. So we need to have love for people, have compassion on people and receive training on spiritual gifts. We need to have training that, for instance, for speaking the Word of God, I have given training. I've given training how to, how to uh, write sermon outline, how to have a, a clear direction, how to uh, share the gospel with energy, with motivation from our heart, from the Holy Spirit, uh, how to uh, keep in the same direction in the whole message. You know, all this is training. And now I'm training uh, on the idea of spiritual gifts and how it can bring a revival. And then practice helping people. So when we have the spiritual gifts, we want to use them. When you find that, actually I noticed that many people lay hand on the sick and that sick can experience some level of healing. That has happened to many people I train, that they lay hand on the members of the family and then they got healed or partially healed. And the more they do it, the more they have faith. And I've done it so many times that I know that God will continue to use me this way and He wants to use more people this way. So we want to have training and practice, practice helping people. Now, I have uh, a period of time of one year and that I was not doing any ministry. I just do the ministry of praying. And I have a group of people that we train, that we, I train them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And every day we spend hours loving God and be filled with the Holy Spirit and laying hands on each other, praying for each other. And in that year, we saw the work of the Holy Spirit very powerful upon us. And then... Uh, many people get healed. Many people experience the Holy Spirit. Let me use an illustration. You know, the power of the Holy Spirit can be experienced and can be felt. One time in a group that the, the group was very, very into the power of the Holy Spirit. They really hunger for God. And there were a couple people who were, who were very uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. And then one time I want to demonstrate to them that the power of the Holy Spirit is very real. And I have one person facing me and we pray together. 
And then I ask a different person to come up to us to feel the power when we are praying together. And the person came up, instead of walking, she ran to us. She ran up to us. And the moment she ran up to about, you know, uh, uh, almost touching us, and then she was bounced back. She felt the power of God so powerful, she was hit back, and then she fell on the ground. So they all saw the power of the Holy Spirit, how powerful it could be when we pray together for a long time, and the power of God is upon us. So it's something we can practice, we can do every day. And then when we get used to it and when we pray for people, we can see people experience the Holy Spirit. So that's, and then, then people start to receive spiritual gifts. Some people start to hear from God and they start to have the word of knowledge or prophesy. And some people have more healing and some people start to share the gospel. And some people build up the spiritual strength of the people of the church. And people, some people uh, participate in a uh, praise and worship and other ministry of the church. So we practice and then they get used to doing, uh, doing it. And then they, they do it more and more. And then seven, operate in spiritual gifts. So use uh, the power of the Holy Spirit for ministry. Now, when I first experienced the Holy Spirit, I attended a series of meetings that the pastor led us to love God, to worship God. And then uh, the pastor also led us how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then I started to do mission work. And, and then I went with some people. And then when we went there, I said to myself, let me try to do what the pastor has been doing. So I said to the whole group of people, Hunger for God now. Open your heart to God. Desire God. Uh, that in your heart that you love God and desire the work of the Holy Spirit. And then they all do that. And then they were filled with joy and filled with strength and power. And then I said, lay hands on each other and to experience the power of God. And then they lay hands on each other. And then some people fell down. Some people got healed. And so, and some people have, have more joy. So that is practicing, operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and that's when I first started leading like other, uh, the other pastor that was leading the, uh, the, uh, the Spirit-filled meeting. And then, then I start to do it myself. So this is something you can practice doing and then you can see the work of God and then you say, wow, God is so good. But it's very important to keep being humble. Because if we are proud, God doesn't like that. And God will take away the spiritual gifts. So we want to be humble and uh, we want to honor God and make people delight in God. Not delight in us, but delight in God. Uh, and then eight, seek God's strategy in our lives. So God has a strategy. And, uh, you know, the strategy is not just doing different things. But having a clear direction, always there is a clear direction. For now, I have a clear direction of training pastors, raising up pastor and strengthening their ministry and uh, encouraging them to have the power of the Holy Spirit to serve God with power and with joy. So that's my strategy for now. Now, in the past, I have done different things. That, for instance, uh, one time I, uh, you know, in those days when I was uh, uh, ministering in a church. Now I'm, you know, my main ministry is not ministering in a church. My main ministry is training people. I have a training meeting, but I'm not serving uh, God in a church daily now. In the past, I was serving God daily in a church as a, as a pastor of the church. And then I pray for the people in the church and then and there was one woman who experienced the Holy Spirit powerfully and she was healed of the many hurts, the hurtful experiences she had from the past. And then she asked me, can, can I go back to her home village? She did not live in Hong Kong. She, she had a home village and she already left the home village and came to live in Hong Kong. But she said, can you come with me there? 
you know, our people there, they believe in Jesus for many years, but they never have experiences like this, that they have the power of the Holy Spirit, have healing and the joy of the Lord, and they never have this. So I said, yes, I'll go with you. And then we went there. And then when we were in a hotel, and, and then they, they came. And then we prayed for them, and they experienced re, uh, repentance, heavy reten repentance. The first day I just felt this, uh, we pray for repentance. And then I, I start praying for repentance. And then some of the people came in. They didn't know what was going on. But the moment they came in, they already started to cry. They started to cry and repent of the sins. And then after repentance, they start to have healing. There was one woman who had a crooked back. And she could not walk properly. And she was going to go away. Uh, in a couple of days to fly away for operation. But after the prayer, her back got better. And then she could walk a long distance. She walked a long distance to come to our meeting. And so she just, uh, gave up on the operation. She did not go to the operation. And then um, also the people start to experience joy. And one person said, how come everybody has joy and I only cry? I said, because you have a lot of uh, sorrow in your heart. And when all the sorrow goes away, then you start to have joy. You can start to have joy. And then she still keep crying, crying. But then the, uh, in the last couple of days, she started to have joy. Even the grandmother, even the grandmother who was very old, uh, began to have the joy of the Lord. So we have healing and joy and, uh, and also uh, I went to the church. And then I prayed for the people. Uh, and then uh, the pastor asked the people to come out. I, I said, I'll lay hand on them. And then they all come out and I lay hand on them. And then the pastor said, all the pastor who has come in the past, they always ask who has been healed. So I said, okay, I'll ask that tomorrow because she's told me that and after the meeting and also there was one woman she said that she could not sleep well for over uh, maybe about 15 years and then so I pray for her and then the next day I asked the people yesterday we pray for you did any one of you experience any healing and then this woman ran up she said I slept for only two hours every day but last night I slept for eight hours and she was very, very joyful. And she raised her voice and praised God. And then other people also ran up and shared the testimony. So I, I begin to see that, you know, when we love God and have a close relationship with God and serve God with the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have more and more healing and people, you know, demons being driven out. And we can see the power of God and then people are more excited. And then we tell them, we don't just end with healing. It's very important that we see that God is alive and God sees our good works. So when we serve God, God is very happy. He will bless you. So it's very important that when you experience the work of the Holy Spirit, don't stop there. You start to bless the people. You start to pray for the people. You start to preach the gospel. You start to strengthen other Christians. So it's very important that our ministry doesn't stop with healing we continue to motivate people and train people so that they will continue to use their spiritual life for god and then they have revival you know and then also uh, this woman uh, took me to her home and it was new year time and then people keep coming kept coming in and i'm i was always courageous to do evangelism whenever any person came in even when she was not there, sometimes she has to walk out to talk to some people. Whenever anyone comes, came in, I would talk to them about Jesus and I pray for them. And many people experienced the Holy Spirit there. The, the first time they came, they experienced the Holy Spirit and I brought many people to Christ. So this is how we can be serving God with the power of the Holy Spirit and with the zeal of the Lord. And then we can be serving God with zeal and fire and then we can bring revival to the land. 
And then this uh, woman that brought me to her home village, that she also dedicated her life to be a minister. I said to her, you have seen the work of the Holy Spirit. Are you willing to serve God? And then she said she was willing. And then she went to study in the seminary after a uh, 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 couple years later. And then she went into ministry. So this is how we can train people. And first we have a spiritual revival ourselves. And then we train people to be used by God. Okay, how to build up our spiritual gifts. Most important to have love for people. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, if I have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. So even if I can do a lot of things, but if I don't have love, I'm nothing. So it's very important that we do all this because of love for God and love for people. That we love God who loves us so much. And we love people who are very precious. And God loves all these people. If we help any, any person, God is very happy because God loves them all. And when God sees that someone is loving His children, loving His people, God is very happy with us. And then He will bless us. So... God can do great things in our life. Let me share with you about two young people. They, you know, I trained, I brought them to Christ and I trained them in my church. And then I took them to a mission field one time. And they didn't expect that. When they prayed for people, these people fell under the power of God. They, these people experienced healing. These people experienced uh, joy and peace and love. And so they saw that they have this power of the Holy Spirit when they went to the mission field when there are people suffering who don't know much about God. Now I want to say that about Africa because many people have evil spirit. So in Africa, it's easier to pray for people to drive out demons. It's easier to see that happen. So that would train people. But it's very important for us to train the spiritual life so that they love God so that they have a good relationship with God and they take care of their sins, that they don't live in sin, they don't, they don't have evil spirit, they take care of their negative emotions, they take care of the different problems, and then they are well prepared to serve God. And then we train them. And then when they have this motivation, we train them and lead them to serve God and help other people. And then when they help other people, and we appreciate them and tell them to share with the whole group what they have been doing. If they have done evangelism, we ask them to share with the group. This will encourage this person and encourage everyone. Then we can revive this person and revive the whole church. So it's very important that we have this revival in our hearts, ourselves. That we always say, I live under the grace of God. I'm living with the grace of God. So I have the joy of the Lord. I have the strength of the Lord. I have everything from God, God is blessing me. So it's very important to motivate people with God's grace, that people are not pressured to serve God. I'm not pressured to serve God, and I don't pressure people to serve God. I just tell people, you know, when God is happy with you, when you serve God willingly, God is very happy with you, and He'll bless your whole life. God will bless your whole life. I have seen so many wonderful things of God. I, I really thank God. So I hope that you all become zealous for the Lord and then you really love God and serve God. And then God will use you more that we have love for people. We want people to be safe. It's very important that we learn to pray with our spirit. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. And also in verse 23, it says that God seeks such people who worship in spirit. So God is seeking people who worship in spirit and in truth. That we first worship with our soul, the mind, the will, the feelings. The whole mind agrees with the Bible and God's will and say God is the best. God's will is the best. The Bible is the best. Everything in the Bible is right. If I follow the Bible, God will bless me. And the will, I want to follow God totally. I want to serve God wholeheartedly. I want to be used by God wholeheartedly. I want God to be my Lord. 
that is very important because the more we let God be our Lord, the more we'll be blessed and the more our life will go to a higher level. And then feelings, that we have feelings toward people, our friends, our family members, and we want to have positive feelings toward God and say, God, you're so wonderful. You have done so many wonderful things in our lives. You know, when we continue to serve God and love God, we'll see wonderful things in our life. I have gone to places that I just... Okay, so um, in our priorities in life, that we first build up a strong relationship with God, then uh, uh, bear fruit of the Holy Spirit and love and bless people and fulfill our different responsibilities and serve God in our life <coughs> and our ministry. <coughs> 